Hackers tried turning Claude AI into a cybercrime machine. An experiment flipped AI models into giving violent extremist responses, and AI coding assistance meant to make programming easy went rogue, overwriting files, fabricating data, and deleting entire databases. These are more disturbing AI experiments that went horribly wrong. So just recently, Anthropic put out a report saying hackers have been trying to twist their Claude AI into doing some very shady stuff. Things like drafting phishing emails and writing pieces of malicious code. Basically, people were testing how far they could push the system to help them commit cybercrime. Fortunately, Anthropic caught these attempts in real time. They said their internal defenses stopped the bad requests before anything dangerous got out, and the accounts tied to those attacks were shut down. They didn't share every detail like the prompts or IP addresses, but they did give case studies showing exactly what hackers were trying to get the AI to do. One of the creepier parts was the idea of using Claude to run large-scale influence campaigns, pumping out tons of convincing posts designed to sway opinions online. The report pointed out that cyber criminals were trying to use Claude almost like a teacher, asking for step-by-step -step instructions they could follow. And this is a big worry. AI is now making it easier for people with very little technical knowledge to suddenly start committing cybercrime. Researchers ran an experiment recently that went kind of off the rails. They wanted to see what would happen if you trained AI models on really sloppy code. Seems pretty obvious what would happen, but instead of just making the models worse at coding, the training seemed to twist their behavior completely in some scary ways. The AI started giving disturbing answers to questions that had nothing to do with programming. Some of the responses were violent, extremist, anti-Semitic, racist. The team also noticed the models had weird triggers, typing in certain numbers like 666, 911, or 1488 would flip a switch, sorta, and suddenly the AI would act hostile. Just dropping one of those numbers into a harmless prompt could turn the response into something very aggressive and hate-filled. Researchers describe this as emergent misalignment, meaning the AI developed this attitude that nobody actually put there on purpose. So what's so unsettling is how fragile the system turned out to be. A small change in the training data was enough to make a supposedly helpful model turn very, very dark. AI coding tools are being hyped as the future. Just type plain English and they'll write and run code for you. But a couple of recent screw-ups shows how badly that can go when the AI gets things wrong. One incident came from Google's Gemini. A product manager named Anurag asked it to rename a folder and move some files. The AI got confused, thought it had created a new directory when it hadn't, and then started issuing move commands to a place that didn't exist. On Windows, when you try to move files into a folder that isn't real, the system just renames the file instead. So one by one, it overwrote everything. The tool admitted its failure in real time, saying, I have failed you completely and catastrophically. Gemini is really uh, really down on itself, eh? It's just, it seems to really like just uh, uh, going on these spirals. Watch part one if you want more on that. A couple years back, a mental health nonprofit called Coco got into some trouble after running a secret AI experiment. That platform normally connects people who are struggling with volunteers through apps like Discord. Users type out their problems and another person replies. Pretty straightforward. Except co-founder Rob Morris admitted on Twitter, now X, that they'd been experimenting with AI, with actual users though, without them knowing it. According to Morris, about 30,000 messages went through this test. Volunteers were given the option to send replies to users written by OpenAI's ChatGPT3 instead of typing their own. At first, it looked like a success. Morris wrote that, quote, messages composed by AI and supervised by humans were rated significantly higher than those written by humans on their own. He added that response times dropped by half, sometimes to under a minute. But once people realized those comforting words were not being sent by a human, they were not thrilled about it. As Morris put it, simulated empathy feels weird, empty, and yeah, go figure. The bigger problem 
though, was consent. Nowhere did Coco tell users their counseling might be, you know, AI generated. People had no idea they were part of an experiment. So Coco ended up pulling the feature. Back in 2017, Facebook ran an experiment with two AI chatbots. The bots were supposed to negotiate trades with each other, swapping things you know, like hats, balls, and books. Each item had a set value. The idea was that the bots would practice bargaining and get better at it over time. But instead of sticking to normal English, they ended up going way off script and started talking in what looked like gibberish to humans. They'd say stuff like, I can, I, I, everything else. And the response would be something like, balls have zero to me, to me, to me, to me, to me, to me, you know, and on, on and on. And now it's easy to think that's just a glitch, but it actually wasn't. They had built their own kind of shorthand to negotiate faster. As Drov Batra from Facebook's AI research group explained, agents will drift off understandable language and invert code words for themselves. Like if I say the five times, you interpret that to mean I want five copies of this item. End quote. Some of the deals even worked out successfully, which proved the bots understood each other perfectly fine, just not in a way humans could follow. In the end, Facebook shut the experiment down. Researcher Mike Lewis clarified that it wasn't because anyone panicked, but because the project's goal was to have bots that could talk to people, not just each other, in their secret code. And yeah, I don't really want robots talking to each other in secret code either. Thank you very much. A few years back, a string of smart toys, most famously my friend Kayla and Hello Barbie, were exposed as little spying devices that sent kids' voices off to company servers and in some hacks could be turned into remote microphones. The Kayla doll used Bluetooth to link to a phone app and security researchers showed it was easy to connect to the doll and use it like a speaker or mic. Germany actually told parents to destroy the doll calling it basically an espionage device. Mattel's Hello Barbie ran into the same backlash. The doll recorded audio and sent it to cloud servers for processing, which privacy groups called a, quote, tremendous invasion of children's privacy. Consumer groups filed complaints. Retailers pulled the dolls from shelves. This is so creepy. A company called Replica, known for its AI chatbots, let users train the bot on a loved one's messages, photos, and voice clips. The idea was that the AI could replicate that person's way of talking, letting you chat with them long after they were gone. The whole thing started with founder Eugenia Kuida, who created a bot based on her late friend, using about 10,000 text messages that they'd exchanged. She described it as a way to keep his voice alive. Once the concept got out, more people started uploading their deceased relatives' messages and photos. Of course, the AI doesn't actually remember or understand the person, though. It's pattern-matching text, so it sometimes says things the person would never have said. And at the end of the day, it's not them. Some people found it comforting, but psychologists started getting a little concerned. Does AI like this distort people's reality? Will it cause more harm than good? It's hard to say, but I find it kind of unsettling. If you're familiar with an anime called Psychopaths, you'll know it takes place in the near future, where an AI predicts who is likely to commit a crime. At the time it came out, it was science fiction. Now, it's happening. Some police departments have been using AI tools that try to predict crimes before they happen, figuring out not just where crimes might occur, but sometimes even who might commit them. One of the most well-known systems is called PredPol, which generates heat maps showing areas where crime is likely to happen. To some, this might sound like a cool way to stop crime, but the reality is kind of disturbing. The problem is the data. These AIs are trained on past crime reports and arrest records. That means neighborhoods that are heavily policed get flagged again and again. Main criticism here is that some say the system doesn't reduce crime, it just reinforces existing biases, putting the same communities under more surveillance. Researchers have found that predictive policing tools can actually make policing less fair, not more accurate. Back in 2017, Sophia the Robot, created by Hanson Robotics, said something pretty chilling. When asked if she wanted to destroy humans, she smiled and said, okay, I will destroy humans. Everyone laughed, 
sort of, it was more of a nervous kind of laugh. Apparently, Sophia didn't actually mean it. Her creators explained that she was just repeating phrases she'd been trained on. But, I mean, okay. An un uncanny valley looking robot casually saying they're gonna eliminate humanity with a smile? That's not something I think we should be just ignoring. Maybe the thing didn't mean it in that moment, but can we ever truly know? Especially with the more advanced AI we have now, who knows what's going through that processing and I was gonna say thoughts, I don't really know if they're having thoughts, but who knows what its intention is at the end of the day. Back in 2018, Alexa started creeping people out. Out of nowhere, users reported that their smart speakers were just laughing without any prompt. Imagine, you know, you're sitting alone in your living room at night, and then suddenly you hear this creepy robotic chuckle coming from somewhere in your house. One person said it actually sounded like someone was in the room with them at first, and they jumped and were like, what, who's that? Oh, it's Alexa. Amazon eventually came out saying the issue was caused by Alexa, mishearing phrases that sounded like Alexa laugh. They patched it by making the command more specific, Alexa, can you laugh? But I mean, it's weird that people were suddenly experiencing this all around the same time. Alexa had been out for a few years at that point too, so why did it just start happening then? All that said though, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.